Manchester, and I'm Juvan, you know, for, for those that don't know, from the 45 show, and we're here with Olivia Lane, who Yay. is a singer and songwriter from Texas, yes. in the US, mm-hmm. and we're just commenting about this amazing green room. I know, and it's posters. so nice, it makes me this feel like an artist. This is the perfect spot, like we're happy with this. Totally, <laughs> totally. So, one of the first things that I'm going to ask and it's not actually one of the questions I've written down, but I've got to ask it. Someone that's came down to Manchester from Glasgow, and I'm sure there'll be a reason. We're going to find out what it is. Why did you not come to Glasgow this time? <laughs> Why have you avoided Scotland? Actually, we, <laughs> we keep getting so many people on social media. We call it like the OL UK tour because uh-huh. we were trying to get shows everywhere. We were mm. trying to get shows and um, we we didn't end up. No one wanted to like. Really. We, well, we couldn't find any dates that right. matched up. Yeah. Um, and we just like you know this is our first time over here. Yeah. Um, so really it was just like bad luck that we didn't get any shows, and we've been getting a lot of people being like, um, there's more to the UK <laughs> than England. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, I know, we tried getting a show in Glasgow, but it just didn't work out this time. Next time. Yes, yeah. definitely, next time. Mm-hmm. So you started singing, singing, uh, singing and songwriting at 16. Yeah. What kind of songs did you write? And what was your process like at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, so I, I started singing probably, um, so songwriting I started around 16, but mm. I think singing was really always sort of second nature for yeah. me. Because my mom was a singer, and so she was always singing, and so I just wanted to be like my mom and sing around the house. Um, but my first song I ever wrote was called Indiana, and it was about my boyfriend at the time going to Indiana, like right. for college, yeah. and it made me so sad. Um, and and thinking about that and, and dealing with like graduating high school, which is like a, a close of a really big chapter mm. of your life, mm. you know. Um, and I think I just honestly I remember writing down lyrics. And uh, I had this hook in my head, like, I just really feel like it was God-given, sort of. Like, I kind of, all of my ideas come from God. But, like, I I don't know, I just wrote it down. I I put it to words and and put it to music, and I just played it for my mom. And she was like, wait, you you wrote that? And I was like, yeah. (laughs) And she was like, huh. And then she was like, okay, I think my daughter could definitely do songwriting. (laughs) If this is her first song, it wasn't complete rubbish. So, like, I don't know. So, and, like... Here we are, 10, 11 years later. It's a lovely story. Yes. And a great name, you know, like obviously after a place, but a great name for a song, Indiana. Yeah. I like it. It's got a, it's got a good ring to it. It does. I like that. I know. I like that. So many, I go back to my high school friends and they're like, your music's good now, but like Indiana <laughs> was your best. I was like, glad that I reached my peak at 16, guys, <laughs> exactly. when I knew nothing about songwriting, you know? Because that's the thing, you know, it, it is so interesting when, you know, you hear people who, do start writing and singing at such a young age Mm -hmm. and that's you know like i'm I'm one of these people that i said before we started recording just take it from the beginning yeah and when i saw that i thought i need to know what the process was like at that age and Mm -hmm. what would you write about and now we know now we know i think when you're young like and you go through relationships it's like that's the best stuff to write about you know just heartbreaking just to be able to vent it yeah that's what it is it's therapeutic and i think absolutely i think from an early age the one thing that i take away from that experience is a good song to me something that i cut as an artist has to be something that like like really hits me on a deeper Mm. level and hits my heart you know what i mean i hear it and i still get chills yeah even though i wrote it it kind of feels like a little bit distant to me like, I can hear it over and over, and mm. it's like, oh, my gosh, this makes me feel something, so. Yeah, and exactly, and, you know, it's that thing that it, it's good to have a song that, you know, I think when you have a song that you can play over and over again and never get tired of it. Yes. Is another sort of, it's a giveaway, you know that it's, you've, it's a hit. Exactly. You know, that, because, yeah. Totally that, getting stuck in your head, and also, like, I feel like the great songs that I love and that I aspire to write one day are the songs that sort of stick with you mm. and they change meaning over time the older you get you know yes. what I mean yeah um so that's hopefully I, I get to write songs like that because you can listen to a song at that age have the opinion yep. and then listen now and the opinion changes completely or, different or you hear something god I never heard it then but I hear it now yeah and it's amazing it's yeah it's it's cool that's I love why, that story. why I love music <laughs> I love it and you got a lot of encouragement from your mum yeah. who's also a singer, mm-hmm. which you obviously touched on earlier. Explain to us what encouragement she gave you 
and what it was like having a mum as a singer. Yeah, um, we have a really interesting relationship now. Like she's, I love her to pieces. Mm. I feel like I'm sort of like the reincarnation, like extension of her. You know, like she never really um, fully pursued being an artist yeah. in Nashville. Um, she sort of stayed in Texas and uh, did the local Texas scene. And her and my dad actually met in high school and got married wow. um, in their early 20s. So they've sort of been a unit uh, for a really long time. But I think she just provided access for me. Mm. She bought me records. She saw this little artist girl who had all this energy. And so she was like, oh, she's not much in the sports department. Let's put her in theater. <laughs> and I wasn't, trust me. Um, like, let's put her in theater. Let's put her in guitar. Let's put her in... Um, let's immerse her in music. Mm. Um, and she wasn't a stage mom by any means. She wasn't like pushing me to do yeah. things. She was just kind of like, let's just like see how she does with music. And I think every time I'd come home, I, I would hear what she's listening to. I'd be hearing at the time it was like on American radio it was like the, the height of like Britney Spears and NSYNC and like that whole pop thing. Mm. Um, and then she made sure that I listened to all of like her favorites, like Carole King and Linda Ronstadt and, um, Trisha Yearwood, you know, like she really loved country music. Mm -hmm. So she was sort of my first taste of country music, all the big female voices. Um, and then the rodeo in Houston, it's like, we would always have country acts coming through. So like she would make sure that I got to go out and see shows and it was just really providing access yeah. for me to be, um, <clears throat> to be inspired and to see music. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's a lovely thing. You know, it's another lovely story because you had a mom that encouraged you. Yes. You know, rather than be one of the pushy boys. Yeah. So a blessing. Yes, completely. I, I had a, I took screenwriting in um in college yeah. and my teacher walks in the first day and he goes, How many of you guys love your parents? And some of us raised our and he was like, How many of you hate your parents? And then he was like, How about, how many of you just like feel like whatever about your parents? Like you don't really know. Oh. And nobody raised their hand and he goes, Great. All of y'all are gonna be great screenwriters. Because the people who yeah. are lukewarm about relationships in their life, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. it's just, they don't have anything to write about. It's just kind of like, yeah, they were fine. You know, and it's like, uh, and you need like an intense love or an intense hate to like really feel things as yeah. a songwriter, you know? And I'm just, I'm lucky that my mom, my parents really were loving. Mm. Yeah. Very loving. Absolutely. I'm very blessed it made, to have it makes such a difference. It really parents. does. Mm. And uh, Rolling Stone has named you one of their country acts you need to know. Yeah. And you've also received praise from Entertainment Weekly, to name mm -hmm. a few. You know, the list goes on, everyone. <laughs> uh, how does it feel to be getting such high appraisal from the likes of Rolling Stone? And what sort of impacts has it had on your career? Yeah. Because that, that's a big thing. Yeah, you know, I, I feel like... Um... I feel like getting those sorts of things, it's almost like a pat on the back, like, yeah. you're doing good, kid, mm, like, keep mm. going, you know, like, I don't see that as sort of like a, like, you've made it, you know, like, those things are really, really cool, but as an artist, I still feel like I haven't even hit my prime yet, you know mm. what I mean, and like, um, so it just kind of, it, it's, it's nice to hear someone say, you're doing good, yeah. like, that's how I take those things, yeah. it's like, that's really cool. But I feel like I have a lot more work to do. Mm. So yeah, it's just that's a nice little encouragement. To, yeah, yeah, that's a nice way to look at it. Yeah, definitely. And according to a source, I thought I'd just say that rather than say where I found it. Will be will be secretive. <laughs> uh, so according to a source, uh, you said um, that your new music sounds a little bit more emotional and vulnerable than your previous music. Mm -hmm. So what changed in your life that influenced your music to go that way? Great question. Yeah. We're going to um, get deep. We're getting deep. I love it. Um, so I know it's, I love these kinds of questions. Most questions are like, where are you from? It's like, you know, you can go Google that, whatever. Um, yeah. So I, from 2000, maybe 14 to 16, mm. I was crazy on the road. A lot of girls don't really do like the get in a band with four dudes and go play everywhere. Mm. Um, but I did that and I played in, I played in biker bars. I played in places where only the bar back and like the waiter was there. And like, you know, like that's where yes. you really cut your uh -huh. teeth as an artist yeah. and you kind of realize who you are. But I sort of chalk up those whole like two years of sort of being like living the life of a low life rock star. Mm. Like, you know, like uh -huh. not taking care of myself. Yeah. I'm young, so mm. I'm just like having the time of my yeah, life, yeah. meeting tons of great people and drinking a ton of whiskey and like, you know, like just things where you wake up one day and you're like, whoa, <laughs> I need to like slow down. Um, and 
I just got into some bad habits, just like uh, physically and emotionally. Just mm-hmm. didn't really take care of myself. Didn't take care of my voice. Mm-hmm. And um, my songs were okay, but I needed better songs. And so I was like, I need a break. I need to stop. And at that time, I've sort of um, cleansed my team. I sort of got rid of a lot of people that I felt like oh, um, yeah. I, I had, had a great relationship with, but it was time to sort of move on, mm-hmm. uh, start a new chapter. And I had a lot of cleansing in my life. And so I thought, this is a really good time for me to like figure out my life and what I want mm-hmm. and who I am and mm-hmm. what I love. And that obviously influences my songwriting because I didn't really know what I wanted to, I didn't know what my message and my purpose was songwriting wise yeah um, I knew I needed to be a songwriter and a singer but I was like what do my fans want you know what do they want to hear and so I sort of equate this next round of music as like what happened when I decided to focus on my own self-love uh-huh. you know like yeah. I, I've lost love and I found love in a relationship and I figured out what um, who I wanted to be what I needed to do to take care of myself mm. and um, just moments of learning how to love myself and putting mm. myself first. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of what this new music is. It's just all the lessons I learned during that process. I love it. And mm-hmm. that is that thing, like, you see, you know, sometimes in life we just gotta go, no, wait a minute, I've got to look after myself now. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's crazy because it's like, I just feel like, you know, we, we're talking with ourselves mm-hmm. constantly all day in our heads. Mm-hmm. You'd think that we would really know ourselves, uh-huh. but sometimes you wake up and you're like, I don't even know what's, who I am. Yeah. I need to go... <laughs> Find that out. And, oh. and one of the women on my team told me um, a really great thing. She's like, being an artist means you go, you lose yourself. Mm. And then for 12 songs, you find yourself. I love it. I <laughs> and love then you it. go get lost again. I love it. And then you That's... come back for 12 more songs for an album that hopefully are cohesive. And you find yourself and then you lose yourself. So I'm like, okay. Cool. I love it. Yeah. Oh. Um, and just that, that, like, this is an off question. It's just going. Uh, picking up something that you said that, that's mm-hmm. kind of interesting me. Like you were saying, you know, it, it, that thing like how it's kind of maybe hard to judge what your fans want because you were kind of like saying earlier, what do they want? Totally. How, how does a, an artist gauge what their fans want? I think it really, again, sort of like it starts with me. It right. starts with what I love. It yeah. starts with, it, you find your community through what mm. you write about. And I don't think I could have written any songs without going through that learning process of myself. Um, mm-hmm. I learned that I am a person who really loves, like we were just saying, going deep very yeah. quickly, and a lot of people are very guarded, mm. um, which I, which, you know, I love all kinds of people, uh-huh. but for me personally, to feel, um, like, to fill my cup up, I surround myself with people who understand that about me, mm. um, and I think that for the people who are guarded, the fact that I kind of go there with my music they're able to go there with me. Mm. So the fact that I'm being vulnerable and I'm being open, it helps them maybe in their daily life they're not being open, but when they listen to my music, they can mm. at least feel that way. Um, and so that's that's really a big thing I learned about myself that like, because the main reason I started getting weird like in social settings, I was like, why doesn't anyone want to talk about their deepest fears after we introduce our names? You know, like that's, <laughs> that's the kind of person I am, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, it just was wrapping my head around like, oh, okay, I'm just this kind of person and that's okay if some people don't vibe with it. Definitely. Um, but it's directly translated to my songs. So mm. that's what I'm thankful for. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a, a typical approach when it comes to songwriting? No. No. Zero percent. Next question. <laughs> yeah. Next. Literally, Next. it is like one day, one day I'll have a chorus written. And I'll go in there and I'll be so sure of what I, write, mm. what I want to write about. And then the next day I'm like, I don't know, I'm just feeling like this way. Let's write something like this, you know? Uh-huh. Like, and we just keep vibing. And sometimes I'll come in with a title. I mean, it's just so dynamic. Yeah, I like can't... it can be different from time to time. Totally. Yeah. It really does start, though, with feeling. It starts with, yeah. like, I'm feeling this way. Uh-huh. I feel convicted to write this song. Comes off of that. Yeah. And how, how did growing up in Texas influence your music? You know, I I really had a very blessed childhood, you know, with loving parents. Mm-hmm. Um, we had, like, I don't know, I just had, like, a fantastic friend group who always supported me in my art. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think growing up in Texas, you, you have a sense of ease. Something about the way I grew up was sort of small-town feel, even though Houston's a really, really big city, but, like, my suburb... 
everybody went to the same churches and were mm. on the same uh, sports teams and dance teams. So you really got to know your community. Um, and I just really lucked out with a good family and friend group. And so whenever mm. I go back to Houston, I kind of feel like I can let go a little bit mm. and breathe a little bit easier than, than in Nashville, even though I love Nashville. But, um, you know, Nashville is just work. You know, oh. like work is there. <laughs> work and play is there. Like, But when I go back to Houston, it's like my family's there. And um, and really, and, and country music is just alive mm-hmm. and well in Texas. So mm-hmm. that's also another thing where um, growing up in Houston was unlike any other because we have such a we have this the Houston rodeo that I was talking about earlier yeah. and it's just huge for country music they have this big carnival and a big rodeo and it's just being surrounded by that energy was really really wonderful I love it mm-hmm. it's that kind of thing you know that we only see over here on television mm-hmm. but you know they're seeing it and then actually hearing somebody describe it who's from Texas and it really paints an image in, in your yeah. head it Texas, sounds brilliant. Texas is such a very, it, it's a very unique form of Southern. Uh-huh. You know, like uh-huh. in the United States, like I feel like Georgia, Alabama, Nash- like Tennessee, um, compared to Texas, it's just very different. It's mm. a different Southern experience, uh-huh. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. And you're big in champ- championing women yes. in music. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your, uh, your, your involvement in that. Yeah, so... Early on when I got to Nashville, I started this, uh, we have, there's a festival in Nashville every year called CMA Fest, which I'm mm. sure y'all are aware of. Yep. Um, and uh, I wanted to start something kind of early on. When I was going on radio tour at the time, I was like, there's just no female love. Mm. Like, what's going on? Like, our our immediate community needs to be more championing of females. Mm. Like, females need to know that we're not against each other. You know what I mean? Even though it's still today it's still sort of a pressure that I feel like some some girls go through but um you kind of have to learn that you you take up a lane just because you're a unique human you know like and I felt like I wanted to promote that idea Mm -hmm. like so I was like let's get a bunch of women in the same room and let's have a great time and prove that like we can get along and we can have a great time and and play a bunch of amazing music so I started this thing called Diva Jam during CMA Fest. And Diva that was, Jam, I love it. Yeah, it was That's such... a great name. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. It was such a unique experience, too. Yeah. Um, but it, it just kind of now, I feel like the conversation's at least happening. When mm. Back when I started it, it wasn't being had. Mm. So now in the community, people know that we need more females on the radio. So. Definitely, you know, and, and that's a good thing, and what you know yeah. what you're doing, and it, that that's what it takes. It takes women just to do it to say like, no, we're going to do this. Exactly, it takes you know? the right it takes the right conversations to be had. Exactly, you know, because it's talking about it, but then it's actually putting those words into actions, and yes. you're putting it into actions. Yes, that's so what I hope to do with my career forever, <laughs> forever. And your go-to cover uh, when it comes to covering a song is "Desperado" by the Eagles. Yes. Yeah. Uh, why do you like covering this track, and do you ever worry that you may not do this, do this someone else's song justice? Yeah. Is that something I would worry about if I could sing and I was covering somebody's song? Always. Like worry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. I I kind of purposefully choose male songs sometimes <laughs> because when I do them, it's almost like there is no comparison. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah. like, oh, you didn't sing as well as, you know, Linda Ronstadt or Trisha Yearwood. And it's like, well, pff, that's like the mecca <laughs> of singers. Uh, you know, like, give me some slack here. <laughs> um, but um, Desperado was a song that I purely, I think when you really love a song, there mm. really is no option to mess it up. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. when you really love it, you're going to do it justice. And Desperado is a song that's just, like we were talking about earlier, it's a song that has stayed with me for so long and mm. changed meanings. Like, I've been the desperado, I've been the person talking about the desperado. And it's like my life just mirrors that song and it keeps mirroring that song. And so I was like, I heard the Eagles version first and then I heard Linda's version. And then mm. I was like, this song has been covered so many times that I think the songwriting just is, it's one of those rare songs where it just stands on its own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's. I mean, people could definitely butcher it. But I think if you're, like, a decent enough singer and have good accompaniment, it's really hard to mess up that song mm. because the song lyrics are so good. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it just starts from, like, a love of a song. Yeah. And Desperado's just like, I just love it. <laughs> it's brilliant songwriting to me. Aww. It is. Yeah. And 
Looking back at your music catalogue, which song would you consider is your favourite and why? My favourite song yeah, that I've ever written? Yeah, yeah. I think it's my newest one, Hey 3 AM. That was a song that, that I was, I had that idea for a really long time uh -huh. and I pitched it at rights and people were like, mm. they were lukewarm about it. Mm. And so I was like, must be a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you, and you do that to yourself as a oh, songwriter, yeah, no, right. you know, because I do pitch out my fair share of terrible ideas, <laughs> on, you know, but sometimes it's like this idea just stuck with me for a really long time. And about a, like a year, whenever I wrote the song, it was like the night before and I had been staying up at 3 a.m. for no reason, you know, just my brain was wired mm. thinking about everything that I was going through and I just looked at the clock and I was like, oh my God, hey, 3 a.m. And I was like, <laughs> I have this idea, like I, it's in my phone somewhere and there it was in my phone and I was like, I have to write this idea. Mm. So I go in the next day, somebody had canceled on us, me and Aaron, and so I was like, can we just write like an artist song, like a... Like, maybe it'll be successful, maybe not. I, I just need to, like, get it out of my system. Mm. It's called Hey 3 a.m. It's all being up at 3 a.m. and just being annoyed. Um, but also coming to terms with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just so proud of the songwriting in that. Because it was just a two-way, which mm. typically in Nashville you do three writers. Um, and I just feel like it's really honestly my truth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. who I am as a person. And that's the thing as well, you know, like, it's something that I can relate to. Because I feel that you know all creative people do have that thing where they're night owls they tend yes. to stay up quite late and it's like yes. oh and the annoying thing is and you'll know it's like it can it can it can be 3 a.m and you get your greatest idea and you go why why can i not have this idea at 3 p.m why right. 3 a.m right. you're gonna keep me up all night now all night <laughs> exactly you know and it's just that happens to me all the time oh. and i'll wake up sometimes i'll have dreams and i'll wake up and i'll like murmur something that i like a melody i hear in my head then I wake up the next morning and I'm like, this is garbage. What was I doing? Like, where did this come from? But then sometimes they're actually kind of cool. Yeah. And it's like, I need to honor this, you know? But, I don't know. So, for myself and Cameron uh, at, at the 45 show, our favorite, we like 3 a.m. as well. Yeah. But our favorite would, would be uh, The Devil and You, the acoustic version. You love it? Oh my God. We like both versions. Yeah, but they're different. The acoustic one is, is bloody brilliant. They're different, <laughs> you know? And uh, actually, uh, I wrote that with Skip Black and Brennan Hunt. And um, Brennan actually was just in the States on this, like, Rent. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know the musical Rent? Yes. Okay, yes, he yes, just played uh, Roger and Rent on, like, right. a TV. He's just killing it right now in, God. Um, as, in terms of his career because he's an amazing singer. Um, I like honestly look back on that right and I just remember it being like just so fun mm. and um, my producer who also is a writer on that song he's like a rock and roll guy so she's like let's write something rock and roll mm. and I was a little bit experimenting as a songwriter and an artist at that time mm. so that song is a little bit rock and roll for me more than where I'm at and, right and now it works it no, works though it's like, it's just so damn brilliant and like, so honestly so yeah. we're playing it we're playing it <laughs> the acoustic way tonight oh yeah, yeah. There you, there you go. I know. Sold. 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 So, I, you know, I, I, one day hopefully we'll like officially, maybe we'll officially record it and release it. But yeah. it's out there. I know it is. But yeah, the acoustic version was really, really fun to do. Like sang in Glasgow soon. Yeah. Watch this space, everyone. There you go. So, you okay, told yeah. me you're coming to Glasgow. Coming to Glasgow. We're not sure when, but we will. And it'll happen and we'll play it there. Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll finish it off with, we'll get to give out social media and like, yeah. for those that don't know, I mean, Those how could you not know? Don't know. How can people like get in touch? Obviously, you're on Spotify and all the major music platforms and stuff. But yep. people want to follow you on Instagram and like, yes. all your amazing stories. Uh, everywhere. I'm... Tell them how they can do it. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Um, so my website is olivialine.com. Um, but you can also visit me. Uh, my screen name. My screen name. Oh my gosh, that dates <laughs> me. My Instagram name and Twitter name is Olivia Lane Music. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, like you can just Google Olivia Lane or something yeah. and things will like, come up. Not exactly. Yeah, like, you know, just put it out there. Worst case scenario, you know, Google, yeah. you know. Yeah. Nice Instagram's my favorite. <laughs> I, I document my life on Instagram stories. That's brilliant. So. The stories are great and addictive. Thank you. Stories. Yeah. So, Olivia Lane, yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. That is it for like my first video podcast or whatever you want to call it. Video pod? I love it. I love it. Start it. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks for being part of it. Thank you and so much. And hopefully, obviously, you'll be in Scotland soon and we'll be able to show you the 45 HQ. Yes, and we'll go get some Aberdeen 
At Aberdeen Angus. Aberdeen Angus. That's what we'll do. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Caught up in between the devil 